bless your name, Jesus. Lord, you are worthy of honor and praise and glory. Good evening, church. Um, welcome to our Friday night worship. And as we come before the Lord, I just want us to come before Him with prayer and thanksgiving. So right now, I'm just going to set apart a couple of minutes just to come before Him, just for us to come before God and lay ourselves down and be in this worshipful posture of our minds. And I want our prayers to look like this. Say, Lord, as we come before your presence, fill us with your spirit. Fill us with the desire for your name. That as we lift up these songs, that as we listen out for the word that you're giving us today, that we would encounter you, Lord. That you would fill us with wisdom and knowledge that surpasses all things. God, for the weary of heart, give rest. God, for the confused and the afflicted, give peace. Be with us, Lord. Let's make that our prayer as we come before God today. Let's pray. Father, we come before your presence today. Father, we want to make you the focus of this night. As we come before you to worship and listen out for your word, we don't want there to be any distractions, Lord. So in Jesus' name, I cast out all distractions from our homes, from around us, from where we are at this moment, so that we can focus on you, Lord, so that we can give you wholehearted praise and worship. We bless your name, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Church, from where you're at right now, let's lift up our praise to God together. Sing, I see heaven. And I see heaven invading this place. And I see angels praising your holy name. And I sing praises, I sing praises, I give you honor, worthy Jesus. And I see glory falling in this place. And I see hope restored and healing of all disease. And I sing praises, I sing praises, I give you honor. Worthy Jesus, we give you praise. Then we give you praise and all of the honor. You are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise and all of the glory, Lord. So we give, we give you praise and all of the honor. You are our God, the one we live for. We give you praise. And all of the glory, Lord. See, I see glory. And I see glory 
falling in this place and I see hope restore and healing of all disease and I sing praises I sing praises I give you honor worthy Jesus all we give and we give you praise and all of the honor you are God the one we live for we give you praise and all of the glory Lord all we give we give you praise and all of the honor you are God the one we live for we give you praise and all of the glory Lord oh we give you praise we give you praise and all of the honor you are God the one we live for we give you praise and all of the glory God so we give you praise we give you praise and all of the honor you are our God the one we live for we give you praise and all of the glory Lord and all of the glory your praise Lord God as we come before your presence may the praises that we sing to you may it come from the bottom of our hearts God that it will be genuine that it will be true Lord that we would truly give you all of the glory in this place today wherever we're at God Jesus name we pray Come, let's worship. And come, let us worship our King. Come, let us bow at His feet. He has done great things. See what our Savior has done. See how His love overcomes. He has done great things. He has done great things. Faithful through every storm, you'll be faithful forevermore. You have done great things, then I know you will do it again. For your promises, yes and amen. You have done great things. Oh God, you do great things. No hero of heaven, you conquer the grave, you freed 
all that you've done, we will pour out our love. This will be our anthem song. Jesus, we love you. Know how we love you. You are the one. sing it out with our hearts, our affection, our devotion. And our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion, poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus, our affection, our devotion. Out on the Let's sing that again. Our affection we pour out. Oh, our affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion poured out on. Oh, we pour ourselves to you, our affection. And our affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus. Our affection, our devotion poured out on the feet of Jesus, we love you, and know oh, how we love you, you are the one, our, our hearts adore, oh, we love you, Jesus, Jesus, we love you, know oh, how we love are the one our, our hearts adore sing it just one more time with our hearts cause Jesus we love you and know oh, how we love you you are the
is jealous for me. And he is jealous for me. Love's like a hurricane. I am a tree bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy. Oh, when all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions, he clips my glory. And then I realize just how beautiful you are and how great your affections are for me. Oh, how he loves, yeah, he loves us. Oh, Drawn to redemption by the grace in his eyes. If his grace is an ocean, we're all sinking. Yeah, yeah. So when heaven meets earth like an unforeseen kiss, and my heart turns violently inside of my chest. I don't have time to maintain these regrets when I think about the way that He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, how He loves us. Oh, Every day we live, we're reminded of your love over and over again, God. Through the people you've placed around us, through the things that you do in our lives. Father, no matter how far we run, no matter how hard we try, we can't get away from your love. And Father, I thank you for the love, God, that you've given us. Lord, we don't deserve it. Lord, we're not worthy of it. But Lord, you give it to us. Thank you, God. Thank you, Father, for your love. Help us to know your love more and help us to draw near to you and love you more as well. So thank you, Lord. Bless your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome back to our current tea time. Yeah, so um, I think you guys all know what's happening by now, right? So uh, for two weeks now, we had discussions with our teachers. The first week, we had discussion with JB teacher and Scott teacher about what is worship. And last week, we had a, a discussion with Jessica teacher about trusting God. And today, we actually have Deacon Beck, one of our amazing teachers, to join us. Uh, and we'll be talking about another topic that we'll get there soon. But first... Taking back, how have you been during this COVID season? Um, I've actually been doing very great. Huh? Um, spending a lot of time with my family, right. both indoors and outdoors. <laughs> Not a whole lot of places to go, but it's, it's great to be with my family. Great to be healthy. Uh, right. Thank God. Amen. And happy to be here. That's great. Yeah, and also, there are some students that might not actually know you. And so, would you care to introduce yourself a little bit? Maybe the sixth graders might actually recognize Deacon Beck for certain things that he did. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so 
Um, for those of you who don't meet, my name is Deacon Beck. I'm one of the teachers here at the youth ministry. I'm currently teaching the junior boys um, ever since last year, which I'm very happy to do. I have my own children in the youth ministry, um, as you might know, um, Jason in 10th grade now, and Sarah in 7th grade, I'm sorry, in 8th grade. Um, I'm a son of God, <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm a son of, a child of God, <laughs> and um, I'm a learner myself. Um, I'm a Christian, but I'm still learning every day. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. And so today, uh, we're actually going to be talking about, you know, we already talked about this, but you guys don't know. We're going to actually be talking about what it means to love God. Um, so last week, like I said, we, we talked about like what it means to trust God, but this week we'll be talking specifically on loving God. We kind of touched and dabbled on that idea of loving God last week, but today I'd like to go in a little bit deeper in that. You know, because a lot of times, a lot of the songs that we sing, we always sing stuff like, oh God, we love you, oh how much we love you. And even today, that the songs that we sang, they're all about that. And so we have so many songs, like love songs towards God, and that's pr pretty much all the praise songs that is to honor Him. But if we're honest, what does it really mean to love God? And so that's what we're going to be tackling. Because if we're honest, if we were able to feel God with our five senses, then honestly, it would be so much easier to love God, right? Like, if it was like, just like Deacon Beck sitting right next to me, I could see God right next to me. Then I'll be like, all right, God's physically, literally right next to me so I can see him. If I can hug him, I can, you know, embrace him or whatever. It'd be so much easier to, like, trust God and love God and have a relationship with God. And so how can we have a relationship or how can we love someone actually who seems to be kind of out of reach? And so we're going to be discussing that today. And so, well, I'm going to start by actually saying that to love God is to know God, right? To love God means to know God. And not that knowing, that knowledge actually begins with the Word of God, with the Bible. And honestly, this might sound weird, but knowing, to know Him is to love Him, right? And so knowing God, to love God, you need to know Him, and to know Him, you need to love Him. So it's like a perfect circle right there. And so because I say that, because there's so many Christians out there that I realize that they consider themselves Christians, but they don't know much about God or much about the Bible, or I realize, that, or more so, they know a version of God, the version of God that the te the church teaches, but they never experience God. They never really love God on their own, or maybe even you guys as well. You guys know a version of God through your parents, the version of your parents is God, right? And so, so you know God, you know of God because of your parents, but like, what about? You guys, do you guys know who God is? In other words, do you guys love God on your own, right? And so because I think because of that core issue, a lot of people not knowing God and loving God, a lot of times whenever people sing songs of praise or whenever you pray, it seems kind of empty. I've heard a lot of like youth, youth students, I'm not sure if you have talked to your students as well, who say stuff like, oh, you know, like, Pastor Jay, whenever I'm praying, it really seems as if I'm talking to just air. It's like, like nobody's there or whatever. Um, and I think that starts, that stems with, like, they don't really know God. They know about God, but they don't know God, right? Like, some of you guys know all about God. A celebrity like BTS, Blackpink, you know, every single member of, of, the, of that, you know, like group or whatever it is. But you can't say you love them because you don't know them, right? And so I think in the same way, Christians know about God, but they don't really know God, right? And so this is why it's so hard to truly love God because we don't really know God. Because even for me personally, I grew up in a Christian household. Um, my parents are pastors or missionaries. Both my parents are actually pastors, <laughs> both of them. Um, and so I knew about God. I knew about this God that my parents are constantly preaching about, but I never knew God. I knew God in my head, but I never knew, like, personally experienced God. And... And if I'm going to be completely honest, I came to God when I was 18. And so I'm 27 now, so I only knew God for, what, that's like eight, nine years. So I didn't know God for that 
long, to, if I'm being completely honest. And maybe some of you guys who have truly met God at a younger age, maybe you guys have been Christian longer than me, just, just letting you guys know. Um, and so Deacon Beck, per, like, this might be a personal question, but, and if you don't mind sharing, what was your experience like about just like loving God and getting to know God and all that? Right, so um, just like you, I was born in a Christian family. Um, I guess I always went to church. It was Monday to Friday you go to school, Sunday you go to church. Um, I thought I knew God, mm. but then, I mean, later, I'll come back to my story, but later I realized that I was just knowing him, I guess, through my, with my head. Right. Um, uh, you said you met God at the age of around 18. Um, I was double, almost double that age when I truly met God. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess that sort of gives out my age. Um, you still look very, very young. Uh, thank you. Back. Thank you. Okay. Um, so it started as me going through some hardship, actually. Mm. And through that hardship, I could feel God speaking to me and touching me. So, you know, going through, you know, my school of, my years of school and college and whatnot, my success suddenly became my top goal of mm. living. I mean, I, I was fully dedicated to earning my success, making more money. I thought I was more successful than my friends. I thought that was what God wanted me to do, mm. I thought. Um, at that time, and looking back, I wasn't really fully devoted to God. I didn't know Him truly, and that affected my relationship my, with my family as well. Mm. Like I said, my life, my goal was most important to me. Right. And so I was praying on Sundays at church, but I was praying for my success. Right. I was very selfish. Um, go back after Sunday, go back to your workplace, make more money. And... I found myself being in this vicious cycle. Mm. It was hard to get out of myself until God broke it for me. Mm. So God actually took away my job. I found myself jobless without any income um, while I had three kids. um, And that went on for at least six months. Suddenly I find myself depressed Mm. at a very low point of my life and nowhere else to go. Right. On the weekdays, nowhere else to go. So where did I end up going? I, I came to church. Mm. I just wanted to meet people like I did outside. I joined a lot of programs. And still, so I, I sometimes found myself praying in tears. God, just help me. Mm. And you know what? God helped me through that period. I could feel him comfort me deep inside and just reaching out to me through his words right. and, and through that experience. Right. That's how I met God. Mm. So looking back, my arrogance was, stepped, was put down by God. He gave me an opportunity to truly know him. Right. And after that happened, it, it really changed my life. I wanted to know him. Mm-hmm. I wanted to love him. Amen. I wanted to read the Bible. And I wanted to reach out to him as well as other people right. through his love. And so would you say that you, like back then, you were kind of deceiving yourself that you were a Christian? Of course. I have to be a Christian. I grew up in a Christian family. Right. I come to Sunday school every week. I probably raise my hand to answer some of the questions. But did you truly know God, I asked myself. Not the way I do now. Mm. Mm. And I'll say this. God loved me first, and that's what helped me to find my love for God. Right, right, yeah. right. And I think that is something that all of us, every Christian has to, like, overcome. Like, oh, and then, like, if you first become a Christian, like, a lot of Christians I know, they're like, oh, I'm a Christian because my parents were Christian. I've always gone to church, but that's more culture. You're a cultural Christian. But are you truly a Christian, you know, or are you truly a follower of Christ, right? And so what does that mean to love God? And I think you put a, you, you, honestly, your story right there, like, answers that question too, because I'm going to read out of Deuteronomy 6 verse 5. It says, love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, and with all your strength. In other words, love him more than me. 
right? And that, that was perfect in, in Deacon, Deacon Beck's story, right? Like, love him more than anything else. If you love anything else more than God, then honestly, like, I don't think, and I'm, I'm sure you would agree that we're not really in love with God and others. We're not really Christians, right? Yeah, so, and this is one of the hardest things to do. This is the greatest commandment that God has given to us, but this is one of the hardest things to do because the tendency is that we'll love ourselves more than anyone else. And we'll try to justify that by, oh, I'm making this money. I'm doing all this for God. I'm doing it for God. I'm doing it for, but it's, I am doing it for me. Me, 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 me. It's the unholy trinity, me, myself, and I. <laughs> so it's not, instead of doing it for the holy trinity, we're doing it for the unholy trinity. And honestly, that's the same thing for me as well. Like, I've constantly tried to make myself be better, trying to do more of myself and to try to boast in my own whatever it is. But I just realized too that when I decided to put myself second, when I put God's wishes, God's desires, God, God first, you know, Scripture says see, first, but first seek the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all these things will be given to you. But first, that, that's what He says, but first, right? Because why does he say that? Again, it's because we seek our own desires and not God's desires. So what I'm trying to say is that our priority should be God. Like if we love God with all our hearts, with all our souls, with all our minds, with all our strength, we won't allow other things to crowd into our lives, right? If we have Jesus as a center point, we're looking at him and only to him, then our hearts will be naturally filled with the love of God and naturally we'll be able to love the people around us as well. And also we'll naturally try to do God-pleasing things. So let me ask you to come back. You have, you know, you have a wife, you have three kids, like you said, and so hi, Sarah, and hi, Jason, hi, Amy, if you guys are watching. <laughs> but like, if I ask you, do you love your family? Your answer is? Of course. Of course, right? And I'm sure you would do your very best to love and make them happy, right? Of yeah. course. Um, <clears throat> why? Because I love them. Right? Because you love them. And would you ever do something on purpose to hurt them? Not at all. Never, right? Again, it's because you love, love them. Because you love them. But of course, like, because we're humans, we're, we can make ac do accidents and hurt them accidentally or whatever because we're flawed. We're not perfect. But we wouldn't do it on purpose. We wouldn't naturally go up to them and just like, hit them without, any, without reason. We wouldn't like, uh, put poison in their food. We wouldn't do anything like that if they ask us for money. If your children ask you, ask you for money, you're not going to give them rocks and say, hey, you, you do whatever. You know? like, you're not going to do that, right? And so... like. I think that's the same thing with us and God. Um, if we truly love God, then we're naturally going to do the things that God is pleasing towards God. We're not going to do the things that's hurting God. We're going to do the things that God wants us to do. Because there's a command that Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commands. And so I want to ask you, what's something that like was hard for you to break? What's the, what was the tendency of... or Another way to phrase it is, how did you break that tendency of not me, but you? How did you overcome me, the me-centeredness? Right. Well, I would go back to the Bible. Hmm. The moment you take your eyes off the Bible, in my case, you see things. <laughs> Watch television, um, look at your iPhone, you see a lot of things, and you see, you want. Hmm. And you want, you desire, mm -hmm. you desire you sin, you fall down, you tend to. You always want to go back to the Bible. God speaks to you. There are things God wants us to do and doesn't want us to do. Um, loving God, I think, um, is basically following God, following Jesus. Amen. Following Jesus doesn't necessarily need to be an obligation, a thing I must have to do. It's God wants us to follow Him freely. Right. Um, we have tremendous amount of freedom in following Jesus. And I mean, use my children as an example. I want my children to be happy and free inside my house. Mm. When I know there's danger outside the house, I'll keep them inside the house. They might want to step outside, but I, for every reason possible, I would want to keep them inside. Right. 
And that's, I think, what God wants us to do. He wants us to be within His hands, following Him, and that's the way of life. Right. In fact, um, in the Bible, you'll frequently hear about you know, Jesus or God being the shepherd and us, people of God being sheep. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, one of my favorite verses from the Bible is Psalm 23. And the easy way to, to memorize where in the book of the Bible this is from is, in, in my version, it's Psalm 23 and in Psalm 23, 1 through 6. It has six mm -hmm. verses. Mm -hmm. Growing up, Michael Jordan was my sports hero. His jersey number was 23. Three, and he won six championships. So <laughs> nice. <laughs> Psalms <All right. laughs> twenty-three, one to six. That's anyway, good. the first verse, Psalms twenty-three, one says, "The Lord is my shepherd; I shall not be in want." And if you think about that, if you ever seen sheep, whether on television or in front of you, they are soft, but they're helpless, pretty much. I mean, they can't even run away from a wolf. And if, you have, if, you have, if you've ever seen actually a sheep being hunted down and hunted away from its group by wolves or by another group of wolves, it's actually pretty scary. Mm -hmm. And that actually, you know, gives me an alarming sign saying that's what you can be if you don't follow Jesus. Mm -hmm. Jesus wants us to follow him as a shepherd up through sometimes a hill. Upside, up, um, uphill, which might feel hard on us, right. but that's the safe way. That's the way of life. If, we, if you want to go away, go around, look for your own way, you're on your own, guess what's waiting for you? You don't know. <laughs> Follow Jesus. He'll take you to the water. He'll take you to the pasture. Mm -hmm. And how do we love Him back? Just follow Him. In fact, <laughs> we, we, we didn't listen to Him if you People did not listen to him, to God, if you read the Bible. And what did he do? He, the shepherd, actually became a sheep to say, I and the shepherd just follow me, okay? And the bad sheep killed him. But guess what? He lived again, mm -hmm. and he became the shepherd again. And he's right. saying again, even now, just follow me. And so that's um, the story that I keep reminding myself. Right. How do you love Jesus? Just follow him. He's your shepherd. Right. That's my way of life. Right. And that is so perfect because um, this, is, this is hilarious because so many times as I'm like, even with like JB teacher and Scott and Jessica teacher and even with you, you know, I have things written a little bit in memo notes and then you said exactly what I was going to say. And I'm just like, there you go. <laughs> perfect. But really, um, <clears throat> like, because ultimately the things that God tells us is not to harm us, right? It's not to harm us at all. It's not like, oh, God's saying, hey, you know, I'm going to make you suffer a little bit. You know, it's because I don't like it. No, it's because God cares about us and God wants us to be protected. And all the things that God told us to do is for our benefit. It's not for anything else. It's not because God's like, you know, trying to, you know, like smite us or anything like that. He's trying to protect us and keep us safe. Um, and so, like... <sighs> If, like Jesus said in, you know, John 14, 15, if you love me, keep my commands. Because my commands are the things that's going to be protecting you. That, that's what he's pretty much saying. And, but also, if you flip that command, if you put it upside down, is if you don't love me, your actions won't show it. Right? If you don't love me, you're not going to keep my commands. Like, simple as that. Like, and so I want to ask you guys this question. I want to ask everyone this question. This is a question that we should be asking, you know, on a regular basis, not just once, all right, I'm done. But do I really love God? Do, does my action show that I love God? Do I really care about God, right? And because we can say that I love God right now, but then what about in an hour? What about tomorrow? What about the next day after that, you know? Because... Um, you know, I, we're, both of us were constantly alluding to this because the commands that God gives us shouldn't be a chore, right? It's not like your mom nagging at you. It's like, oh, she's telling me to do that again. I don't want to do it. Like, that's so no, No, it shouldn't be that way. It's, it's more like, I want to do that. Just like, you know, um, if you think back to when you were dating your wife or whatever, 
like, did you, like, did she tell you, hey, get me flowers? No, you naturally want, naturally want to pour things out to her because you loved her, right? You cared about her, right? Like, you didn't, you weren't forced to get her chocolate or fire, or like in Valentine's Day, you don't, you know, like, she doesn't tell you, all right, I want this, 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 on this time, at this time. No, you just naturally do it because it's not out of obligation, but rather out of love, right? And so, like, I think us as well, we shouldn't be obligated to, like, follow the commands of God. It's not like God is forcing us to. It's more like, I want to. It's I want to. I want, I have this relationship with God, and I want to develop this relationship with God, and I want to build it up more and more and more and more. And if you spend more time with God, you'll naturally start learning the things that God doesn't like and naturally start to say, all right, these, are, these things are unholy and I don't like it and I want to, you end up becoming more holy, honestly. Just like if you, if you guys have any close friends, like in some, some of your friends, you, you guys know, some, you have some weird friends, right? You guys have some weird friends, but more you hang out with them, the more you become like them. <laughs> Right? Like if they text a weird way, if they talk a weird way or whatever, next thing you know, you start saying their catchphrases, you start like texting like them, you start acting like them, you start liking the things that they like. Same thing with God. The more time you spend with God, the more holy you become. Th that holiness naturally comes inside of us and we want to do more and more and more things of God and like God. Right? And so, like, I, that's the same thing, that's the thing that we have to ask do, is there anything that I love more than God? Because and I think I said this so many times, but if you love anything more than God, that becomes an idol. That becomes an idol. And it can be anything. Anything can become an idol. It can be, you know, like, it can be money, even your family or games, movies, whatever it is. It can be, or even yourself, right? That, that, those things can be idols, but we have to, like choose one or the other there's no gray area there's so many christians i talk to is like oh you know can i pick both can i pick both god and money can i pick both you know the world have fun in the world go to parties and do all that stuff and god i'm like the scripture right here jesus said you know like you can't have two two masters you, you really can't you can't choose money and god right and that's even my personal experience too like so many times i wanted to like like in college and stuff, I was a small group leader and all, and all that stuff. But yeah, at the same time, on the side, I wanted to go out and have fun, do stupid things with my friends and all that. And then more I did those things, more I realized that I'm just lukewarm. I'm not this devout Christian that God wants. I'm just there. And more I thought about it, did I want that? No. No, not really, right? And so... Like, I, ha I had to come to a realization that I needed to choose one or the other. I can't choose both at the same time. Um, and so, like, in every situation, we can bring glory to God. So are we doing that? Are we doing that? Am I seeking my own kingdom or am I seeking God's kingdom and his righteousness? And so... <clears throat> You know, if you love God, life stops becoming about you, right? And I think you mentioned that at the, at the beginning. Like, what was that experience? You know, like when life stopped being about you. You know, you said that you, you, you couldn't love your family as much. Everything was about you. Like, all about me, 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 me. But then how, what was that experience like to have that shift? So the come out of that shell actually took some time for me. Like I said, I was over 30 years old. Um, I had already lived a life focusing on me and myself, mm -hmm. even, the, even though I had children. Uh, my job and my success was more important than my children, to be mm -hmm. honest with you at that time. Mm -hmm. Looking back, that, that hurts me, and I would want to advise myself, you know, you know better than that. But I didn't know better than that at that time. Like I said, it was only through an experience that God allowed me to go through that gave me that different perspective of life. Mm. And, and what was that experience, if right. you mind sharing? So, after that experience, I started seeing pain in other people. Mm. Before that, when I saw other people complaining about their lives, their hardships, it was like, you got to try harder. 
like I do. Mm. I was self-justifying myself. I was proud of myself until I went through a low season and I, being, having been touched with God, suddenly saw other people going through their low seasons. Mm. Just people walking down the street, you can see their heads low, looking somewhere else. Talking with people, you can see what they're going through and you relate to that. I related to that mm -hmm. and I wanted to help them mm. voluntarily from my heart. And where did I get that strength? Where did I get that love? It wasn't from me. Mm. I knew it was from God. God wanted me to change. He wanted me to use what He gave to me to give to others. Mm. It was a free gift for me. And I could see other people going through a previous, a similar experience that I went through. I just wanted to help them. Mm. And you go on mission trips. I want to reach out to people saying, look, you can be saved. Mm. Don't waste your life. Don't live like that. Find your hope. Find your love. And find your life eternal life in Jesus. Right. That was a simple message. Right. It just came like that. Right. So did that change, like just click oh, one day? Or was, do you think it was like a process? For me, it was not a click at a certain moment. It was a series of experiences, tears, prayers, words through the scripture, and my change of perspective. Mm. Um, looking back, it was a period of God putting me in a, I could probably even call it incubator. Mm. I want you to be here. I want you to learn and I want you to change. In another term, I, I call it the desert, the wilderness. I want you to go out there without any resource. I'm going to strip you down and guess who you have to help you. No one. <laughs> Reach out to me. But this, I'll be sure of. I'll be there for you. I, I could feel that absolutely. Mm -hmm. right. mm -hmm. yeah. So uh, the love of God is always there, but sometimes we're just blind, right? Yep. We're completely blind. And because like, the right thing to do is to desire God. And like to desire Him is something a lot of times we don't. We don't, yeah. right? I, I think one thing that hinders us from thinking of God, reaching out to God, is one of the first points you made. You can't see God. You can't touch Him. Mm -hmm. um, well, I, I sometimes I ask myself, what if Jesus was in front of you right now? What will you do then? Right. Okay, then will you believe? Right. But seeing, uh, believing after you seeing is not truly believing, mm -hmm. Okay. We believe in what is unseen. And he's just not, he's not invisible, by the way. He was here, and he'll be here again. Right. Revelations 1.8, I was, I am, and I will be here again. Right. Um, I sometimes think of God and Jesus as a time traveler. <laughs> so I, I sometimes ask some students, you know, what's one common thing between the Bible? Um, and the Avengers, and maybe the Back to the Future movie, okay? Time traveling, okay? I sometimes think of, wow, Jesus is a time traveler. He was here in the past, in the present, and in the future. He's always there. Mm -hmm. Now, one, and if you look at some of these movies, um, especially with a loving relationship with someone, usually one of the, pers um, one of the people in, in a pair will travel time. The other person can't. Hmm. That's me, and Jesus is the time traveler, okay? Right. And what happens is the person that can't travel has nothing to do but to wait. Right. What do you do when you can't see that person that you love and that you still love? Do you just forget about that person and say, okay, I'm going on with my life? But you know that person is going to be back, whether it's a he or she. And even through human imagination... And through human nature, what do those people do in the movies? Even in the movies, they write letters. They try to communicate with that person. Mm. I'm here. I'm thinking of you at this moment. I love you. I want you to be back. Please be back. I have this and this for you. I just want to be with you. 
That reminds me of my relationship with Jesus. He'll be mm. back, but you know He's there out there. You just want to reach out to Him, and He certainly is working for you. Reach out to Him through prayers. Read what He wrote, what He wants to tell you, what He wants to say. Right. Just remind yourself. Keep reading the Bible. Keep reaching out to Him. Just follow Him right. and maintain that relationship. Right. Yeah, that's something sad I realize is that our souls are constantly yearning for God, but we don't recognize that. Like, we have this sickness in our hearts that we don't recognize that I need God, I want God, but, like, we're so, I, I guess, either blinded or, I don't know what the term is, but we don't recognize the fact that we have this thirst in our heart for God. And, you know, you know in Psalms, it's, as a deer pants for streams of water, so my soul pants for you, O oh God. Is this true for all of us? I say no, right? Because we'd rather go for other things than God. We'd much rather, you know, do ungodly things than godly things because those things are temp more fun in the now, right? So it's just denying yourself to say no, less of me and more of you. And that is so hard. But the thing is that if we have tasted and seen that God is good, then we will want more and more of God. And that's, that's what happened to you. And, and also from in your story too, like before you actually truly tasted God and truly seen God and God work in your life, you didn't really care. But now that you've seen even 1% of it, you're like, I want more. This is amazing, right? And I think that's same for everyone. And there's so many students who say, oh, you know, Pastor Jay, I don't really feel God. I don't see God. I don't, all that. But I want to ask, have you attempted? <laughs> like, that, that's the question. Have you, have we, have you tried? You know, because in Scripture, in Jeremiah, it says, if you seek me with all of your heart, you will find me. And that's a promise. And so I, I'm going to actually shift this conversation to application now. And then actually it ties in with what I just said. Um, because, like, if you seek God with all of your heart, and I'm literally saying with all of your heart, if you really, really want to meet God and you have tried to, like, seek God in every way, shape, or form, in other words, prayer, reading scripture, not just like, all right, today I'm going to read five hours, I better meet God. No, 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 it's not like that, but, like, you constantly, every single day, diligently go to God and try to pray, try to read scripture, even though right now you're not feeling anything, you keep on going, you keep on going, keep on going. God will answer. God will show up, you know? Like, you know, in Scripture, it says, love the Lord with all, I just we read that, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. And so, like, God wants our total devotion, the total devotion. And so, honestly, like, from morning to night, and this is the, one of the hardest things to do. Like, even as adults, this is so hard. It's super hard. From the moment we wake up, do we dedicate our time to God? Like, I wake up, God, protect me today. And as you're living your day-to-day -day life, as you're going out for a walk, as you're talking to your friends, as you're watching TV or whatever it is, like, are you trying to communicate with God? Dedicate your time with God? You know, or if you guys, maybe for some of you guys, seeking God might mean to cut off things might mean to cut off social media, cut off YouTube or whatever because they're so distracting. Or maybe because of the internet, because of social media, you're watching or looking at things that you shouldn't. And so maybe cutting those things off might be a start. You know, like, but just on a general basis, when do you guys go to God? Only when your teachers tell you to? Only when your parents tell you to? Only when me, your pastor, tells you to? Or do you try to seek God? And, you know, like, just get to know Him. Because loving God is not a concept. It's not just like a random concept that we're throwing out. Because sometimes it feels like when you're praying, it feels like you're praying to air, thin air. It feels like God's not there. But mainly it's because we don't get an immediate answer. Just like, you know, if I'm talking to you, taking back, you answer immediately. And I'm, if I ask you, how are you? Like, I'm doing good. You know, like, like, you know, we can have this conversation. I can see your facial expression and all that. But I'm closing my eyes. I'm praying. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. All right, God, where are you? Hmm, okay, that was weird. I just talked to a wall. 
You know, like, it, it seems like there's no one there. But, and because of that, we give up on prayer. We give up on scripture reading. We give up on all that. But I would say that reading scripture and praying is actually like planting a seed right now. And uh, if you're dedicated, dedicating your time is planting the seed. If you're constantly praying, constantly reading scripture, that's watering that seed. And eventually, that seed, next thing you know, that seed is going to grow into a huge fruit and it's going to start bearing fruit. We don't know when that tree will actually fully grow. It might take years, but it might take a couple of weeks, a couple of months. I don't know. We, don't, we really don't know. So, like... So reading scripture, worshiping, wor- uh, worshiping and praying is something that we should do. And we're naturally slowly but surely going to get closer and closer to God. And as you're getting closer and closer to God, as you know more about, as you know more about him, you're going to end up loving God more. And if you guys feel like God's not talking to you and you haven't read the Bible at all, that's a start. <laughs> that, that's something I realize. So many people they say, oh, Pastor Jay, I can't hear the voice of God. Have you read the Bible? Do you, how often do you read the Bible? Uh, once a week, maybe one chapter a day, or one chapter a day, or maybe not at all. You know, so the, the Bible is the Word of God, the voice of God, but it, if we don't know anything about it, how can we know anything about God? Sometimes I think of the, the radio as God mm. speaking to me. So I know most of us don't really listen to the radio if you've ever seen one nowadays, but I sometimes still listen to the radio when I'm driving myself by myself um, in a car. And you have to tune in. You have to turn on that radio mm. in order to listen to the radio, okay? Right. When you turn on the radio, there's always someone at the other end delivering a message to you. They want your ears for commercial reasons, of course, but they want you to hear their message. Right. And God's always out there, except we need to tune in. We need to turn that on. Mm-hmm, yeah, because mm-hmm, yeah. a lot of times God speaks. He's not like blasting music or anything like that. God whispers. Like the voice of God is a whisper. Like th- that's, that's what it says in Scripture so many times. I wish it was like God screaming at us, but God actually whispers to us. So we have to literally tune in and have our ears open to be able to hear the voice of God and have all the, as much tools necessary to be able to listen. That's the word of God. To love God is to know the word of God. And if you know the word of God and you actually believe it and apply it, you're going to love God. And so it's like a perfect loop. And so I think we're going to wrap it up here. And I want to reiterate by saying, you know, like we all can know about God, but we might not know God. There's a difference of knowing about someone and knowing someone. And if you guys don't know God, I really, really, really urge you guys to start seeking God. Because if you guys seek God with all of your hearts, then He will show up. And He will show up to you and show, up, show His love to you. If you have never started reading the Bible, start today. After this worship service is over, you know, like close your computers, close your phones, take out your actual Bible. Don't read on your phones, but actually take out your Bibles and flip through, start reading from Matthew. And just read through the whole New Testament and seek God. If you, stop, if, you're, if you stop praying or don't pray at all, start there too, right? Seek God. You know, honestly, the application of loving God is similar to last week's application of trusting God <laughs> is get to know Him. Get to know Him because you can't love anyone you don't know. You really can't love anyone you don't know. You know, it's, we start reading scripture, even like one chapter a day, if you haven't at all. That's a start. If you haven't prayed at all, even five minutes a day, that's a start. You, you mentioned a lot of things, but I would add, be thankful. Mm. God gave you life. Um, if you're listening to this message, you're capable of a lot of things already. Amen. If you're sitting in the living room, You're already a blessed person compared to other children and other people in this world. Be thankful for what He has given you. Uh, Be thankful to to God. Be joyful in your life. Love yourself, love one another, and love God. Amen. The thing is that God loves all of us, all of you guys, so much. He wants to have a relationship with each and every one of you guys. And my wish is that we're able to reciprocate that love of God back to Him, you know? 
instead of it being a one-sided relationship, I wish it was a, you know, a regular relationship where he loves us and we love him. Of course, we're never going to be able to love God the mo- as much as he loves us, but we can still try our best to actually love God instead of just give God lip service because we're professionals at that. We're really, really good at saying, oh, I love you, God, but doing something behind his back, something that will hurt him. So spend time with him. Live a life full of thanksgiving. And so right now, let's have this time of prayer. You know, honestly, guys, if you guys have been living um, a selfish life and living it all for yourself during this quarantine season, then take this time to actually lay it all down before God. So if you guys can, to just close your eyes, you know, get into a position of prayer. Because I know it's hard to spend time with God. But ask God to actually give you discipline help you spend more time with God. So let's pray that we're not just listeners of the word, of, but, no, but, but that we're people who are able to live out our faith. Tell God that you don't want to be this lukewarm, half-hearted people, but let's pray that we can become faithful people, the lovers of God that God wants us to be. So let's pray that right now. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, Uh, Many of us, we've been living this selfish life this whole time. We've been living all about ourselves during this time. We've been doing whatever we wanted. We never really thought about spending time with you or you have become second, second choice. But God, I pray that we are able to figure out our hearts and actually reorient, reorient ourselves back to you and figure out what's most important and the things that's most important is you, God. Give us this discipline to come down before you and lay everything down and bow down before you and worship you at all times, God. Let us not just be listeners of the word, but also just be able to live it out. God, some of us, we're lukewarm. We're going here and there. We're not fully in your word, in you. So let us change that and be full Christians, God. Let us become the, the people who will love you and follow you and adore you, God. If there's anything inside of, our, inside of us that's not pleasing to you, God, change that. Shape that. Let's sing together, church. Sing, I love you, Lord. Sweet, sweet sound, may it be. 
Guys, join me in prayer. Heavenly Father, Jesus, help us love you. Holy Spirit, be filling us so that we can help, so we can love you more and more and more. God, we're so good at giving lip service. We're so good at saying, God, I love you. God, I want to do these things for you. God, I'm all about you. But God, a lot of times we're just lip service. We're just saying things that we don't really necessarily mean. So God, I pray, starting from today, that we're able to take our relationship with you seriously. If we have not been reading the Bible, if you have not been praying, if we have been relying on the pastors, on our teachers, on our parents to get closer to you, God, let us take our own faith with our own hands and walk to you and run towards you because you have loved us, so let us love you right back. Let us understand how much you love so we can love you right back, God. That is our desire. That is our wish. We want to know you more we don't want to just say these things that we want to know you and we don't want to just talk about your love we want to experience your love we want to live out your love God and so we pray that you're going to be guiding us and leading us into truth so Father I pray that if there's anyone who does not know your love if there's anyone that's currently worshiping with us that do not know you, I pray that you're going to take drastic steps to encounter them so that their hearts will be open. If anyone has hearts of stone, God, I pray that you're going to soften it and make it into hearts of flesh. God, we pray and lift up everything for you. Let us stop living for ourselves and be living for you, God. Let us truly, genuinely love you, God. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, guys. Thanks for joining us in our worship. Um, so we'll see you on Sunday. All right. So don't be a stranger, guys. Bye. say lord is you gave me life and i can't explain just how much you mean to me now as you say me lord i give all that i am to you every day i could be a light that shines your name